Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you all are going to love this one because this is a topic that gets brought up a lot in the comments box. And it's, Luke, how do you maintain a garden of this size uh, when it comes to watering? How often do you have to water and how much water does it take? Um, so anything along those lines. Uh, I, there's a million ways to that it's being put in the comments box that I've seen. And I just kind of want to put it all into this one video because it can all be summed up pretty much by the fact that we really don't water that often. We come up here about once every week to once every two weeks if we get the time. But we really forget about this once, once it gets growing. We really just kind of leave, come back, uh, enjoy the cottage for the weekend, harvest if we have to harvest, and it really grows itself. And it's what we consider kind of a, a hands-off approach to gardening. What we've done, and this is our secret to not having to water as much, and because we only come up here, like I said, about once every week to once every two weeks, we might not even water when we come up. We just kind of tie up the tomatoes, do some weeding that we have to do and whatnot. Um, but as far as watering goes, there's really not that much that we have to do. And, and it holds on to water very well because we use a secret that's been used for thousands of years. Now, a lot of you have probably heard of the back to Eden garden method. I love that method. It's, it's a great method. It's just not one that we choose where you don't have to water that often because the wood chips hold on to the water and it holds on to the roots. So that's, that's a method that we could impl implement, but isn't really our growing style. And then there's the people that, that grow Hugo culture. Hugo culture is where you dig a large trench and uh, you basically take rotting logs and you put the logs into the trench and then bury it up with soil in a big mound. And essentially the logs will hold onto water like a sponge. And what I find is that that also is not really our growing style. Great method, don't get me wrong. I've seen a lot of people grow with that me those methods and they get a lot of success out of it. But it's again, just not our style. And that's one of the things that we really like to stress here is that there's not a specific way to be growing and there's lots of different ways to do things where you can get to the same result of kind of a carefree, hands-off approach to gardening. And while we still have to, you know, do some hands-on stuff like weeding and whatnot, in terms of watering, it's the stuff that most people despise because the last thing you wanna do is have to continuously water and water costs money and it's very expensive in some areas. Here, it's atrociously expensive. So we only water when we really have to. And that's why we chose this approach that I'm gonna talk about. This method is called core gardening. Core gardening is something that not a lot of people talk about, and it's in very few books. When, we were, when I was taking my Master Gardener's course, it was so briefly touched on that if you blinked, you would have missed it. But I'm someone that really likes to dig in deeper, and I read into the section that we were actually looking at, and I was reading about core gardening. And what core gardening is, has been done for thousands of years, very similar to Hugo culture, which is growing with a center core that absorbs water. However, it breaks down about four times as fast, uh, maybe even faster depending on your soil composition, but about four times as fast as Hugo culture. And what it does is it uses small twigs because this method is actually done by people that don't have large amounts of, of uh, basically organic matter, large, like meaning logs. So people in Africa have been using this method, for instance. People um, in different desert regions have been using this method uh, because they have a lot of grasses, but they don't have a lot of trees because most of the trees are used up for firewood. And so this method is one that you actually will take straw or leaves, some type of very fine organic matter that breaks down very quickly. It's not very large in diameter. And you put that in the trench and you don't mound it up necessarily. You actually dig the trench and you put, and you basically plant it flat. So in the center of every single one of our beds, you'll find that there is about a six to eight inch layer of, of straw. And that straw has been rotting down. Rotting is the best. If it's not rotting, it's, it will still work just fine, but we prefer rotting. So we'll let it set in the back for about a year or a half a season until it starts to get damp and dark-ish colored. And then we will layer it into the very center of these beds. And what you'll find is that that holds onto the water just like a sponge does, just like Hugo culture does, without having all those the large sticks and twigs and stuff that some people might not have access to, may not want in their garden, um, stuff like that. And 
what it does is it will actually, due to capillary action, it will actually wick water because the 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 trench is about, uh, I would say, about two feet. These beds are four feet wide, so it's about, I would say about two feet, actually. Um, there's really no measurement, but for us, about two feet. And you'll find that the water, once it's into that wet, rotting straw, it will actually wick a foot and a foot. So for four foot beds, you only need one center row of it. And believe it or not, the plants in the center of this pepper bed are actually growing right on top of it. And that's one thing that I wanna talk about. With people that are concerned about uh, basically uh, nitrogen, um, nitrogen sequestration, uh, it's the nitrogen being pulled from the soil in the decomposition process. Oftentimes people are so afraid of losing nitrogen and their plants being uh, affected by it. That is really only done with stuff that takes a long time to decompose. The fact of the matter is, is that we have also a very good nitrogen rich soil here, which is key and important because it helps the breakdown process without losing the nitrogen in the soil. So your plants can still grow on top of it, but it also will break down fast enough so your plants don't really realize it and will actually feed the soil. And then next year you'll simply reapply the, the straw or the leaves or the grass clippings, whatever it may be, into the center. You'll plant on top of it again. It builds your soil. It results in far less watering. And I'm telling you what, deep down inside the soil, it's gorgeous, rich, uh, damp soil that the plants just love. We can be on a 95 degree day, which we've had here, and the plants don't even show signs of, of water loss, not even, not even out this far into the bed, because simply what happens is the beds, they look for what's called equilibrium. And equilibrium is basically it's equal. So it's not going to be really damp here and really dry here. This really dry soil, like I said, due to capillary action, if it's the right type of soil, it will, t it will say, hey, you're pretty damp in, in the middle of the bed. Um, give me some of that moisture. And it will wick it into the, uh, out into the outer edge of the beds until there is an equilibrium. And when one part dries out more, it'll continue to wick either way. So you will always have even moisture in your beds and it's a great method. I absolutely love it. I don't think enough people are really trying it. And so I wanted to try it this year and bring it to kind of the forefront because core gardening, um, well, it's called core gardening, but that's not really what people have called it. There's not really a name for it because um, the people in Africa just never thought of creating a name for it. It's just what they've done for thousands of years to get food to feed their family. Um, and so what it's been come to call is core gardening or I guess sponge gardening, if you want to call it, give it a name. Um, but I call it core gardening because that's what it was called in the book we we're reading. And so uh, that's it. That's what we do to minimize watering without really doing anything different uh, to our growing methods. We don't have to water a lot and um, the plants do great. So hopefully you all enjoyed. I recommend using this method. Try it out, give it a shot. And, uh, and also one thing that I thought I would end on maybe as a benefit as well is those that do not have a lot of soil. Those that may be on a budget and not have enough uh, to fill up their beds yet. This is a great way to add not only organic matter to your to your beds and add a way for your your beds to be moist throughout the growing season. It also will take up room in your beds where soil would normally be. So you don't need as much soil, and that's all going to be rich air gaps where. Um, it's going to allow for fungus and bacteria to thrive. It's going to break down. It's going to feed your plants. And it's just an all-around awesome method. So uh, I'll keep you all posted as the, as the months go. But as far as I'm concerned, I absolutely love it. So that's what we're doing. Post in the comments box below if you've ever tried this method. I would be so, I would be so amazed to, to hear all these different stories uh, if people really started trying this because I think it's just a method that none of people are trying. I really don't. I, I've never seen it being done. Um, and I could be wrong. There's a lot of people that probably have just done it but didn't even really know what they were doing, um, <laughs> which is okay. That's cool. Uh, and so that's, yeah, I'm just having fun. I just have a lot of fun in the garden. I'm excited. I love the growth that we're seeing. And uh, when, I get excited, when I get excited, I just Ah, I just want to keep going, but I know you got stuff to do, so I'll let you go. Hopefully, you all enjoyed. Hopefully, you all are, are learning something from these episodes, and hopefully, you all are growing big or going home. I am having a great day. I'll talk to you all later. See ya. Bye.